that depends on who you ask. One thing's clear though, plenty of people are taking another look at the night sky as they sit home during this pandemic. How, how are you feeling today, Matt? You all right? I'm feeling very well, thank you. You? Yeah, do you remember we spoke about Friday the 13th? Last oh, time? yes. Yeah, um, you were feeling a little bit nervous, perhaps. You had reason to, to be. Shall I okay, tell you what, have you then. seen this? I don't know if you've seen this story, right? I haven't. Um, an asteroid missed the Earth by 240 miles last Friday. So just to, to put that into context, 240 miles the distance between London and Middlesbrough um, at the height, the orbital height of the International Space Station. So just to give you an idea of how close it came. So Matt, you were saying, you know, you weren't, you weren't superstitious or anything like that. This asteroid, right, the reason we care about something that comes this close is anything that um, any fast moving space object within four million miles is considered potentially hazardous. And this asteroid was the size of a bus. It you could argue that it missed us, so it makes it a lucky day. There you go, that's Didn't one you? way to look at it. Very isn't good it? positive go. take. Very good, I like exactly. that. Exactly. It was, it, w it was perhaps going to be um, broken up in the atmosphere if it got much closer, but no one spotted it until the next day. Big <laughs> miss by you. Normal explanations, though. Um, but we're intrigued by the story of a man who's experienced dozens of sightings. We discovered the skies are stranger and more dangerous than you might think. Beautiful night. Had uh, our windows open, and you can typically, you know, hear the hear the airplanes. A couple of miles from Flying Cloud Airport, on a quiet suburban cul-de-sac in Eden Prairie. This man saw a light in the sky last May. Yeah. A curiosity that's become an obsession. I noticed something that I had never seen before, which was an object that appeared to be levitating at or near the airport. Fearing ridicule, he's asked us not to reveal his identity. What did you think it was at first? I had no idea. Yeah, it's coming right, right towards us here. Since that first encounter in May, there's been dozens of repeat performances, he told us. Bright objects in the western sky at around 500 feet, moving slowly and silently across the horizon at about 15 miles per hour. It will fly probably 500 feet above us, 2,000 feet. It's close. Often flying along the same flight path as Flying Cloud Airport, but always after 11 p.m when the airport is closed. Yeah, now it's taking a little southerly direction here. He's made more than 80 video recordings with his iPhone, sometimes seeing as many as six objects together, he says. But airport officials tell him nothing shows up on radar. So you've reported this to Eden Prairie Police. You've reported to the Airport Commission. Yes. To the FBI. I myself called the FBI as and well. And you called the I FBI. Correct. So you've reported to all these agencies. Yes. Including the local Flying Cloud Airport. Correct. And everyone tells you they don't know what these objects are. That's correct. So I have squads checking Homer Hills Park. I have squads checking up by the sanitation company in our outdoor storage site along the Flying Cloud Drive, where a pilot would have an a vantage point if it were a drone. I seldom ask this, but do you care to speculate about what it may be? Perhaps it's a, um, you know, a listening device or something, you know, kind of a, a, a something where a big brother is tracking, you know, people's movements. This year I've gotten more tips from people asking about mysterious aircraft or uh, different things flying around than I've ever gotten before. When it comes to Big Brother being airborne, Sam Richards is the journalist you called. For years now, he's been tracking government surveillance aircraft over major cities across the U.S. To be honest, since the quarantine and then later the killing of George Floyd, there's been a, a upswell in people asking for information about weird airplanes or lights in the sky and that sort of thing. So far, we've been lucky, but in a strange way, the man who thought he was seeing UFOs may have given us an early warning. The skies are stranger and more crowded than we think. It's not nothing. It's something. Welcome to the 
Welcome back to BT. Keep your eyes to the skies, friends. <laughs> so Have you dramatic. seen what happened yeah, yeah. on September 20th in the skies of uh, Aurora? Not far from where we're all living right now. Like an Aurora. Look Aurora. at this. Oh. Borealis? Not a Borealis, D. You Whoa. explain this. What's that? That's okay. the moon? Somebody this moving on the moon? This was at a stoplight at 14-877 Young Street. Okay. Uploaded to YouTube a few days ago. We don't know by who. We Apparently, added the music. Yeah. The UFO was moving so fast. Was it a UFO? I don't know. They're speculating. It wasn't moving in a straight line. You'll notice the erratic patterns. Eventually, it stopped, seemed to hover in the sky. All of a sudden, it changed color and disappeared. Egypt had discovered more than 100 coffins, marking the largest find of this year. Some of them had mummies inside. They were discovered in a vast burial site in the capital, Cairo. The moments of unveiling. The lid carefully removed to reveal the mummy inside. It's part of a treasure trove of antiquities newly discovered in the necropolis of Saqqara. More than 100 intact ancient coffins belonging to top officials of the late and Ptolemaic period of ancient Egypt were on display. Archaeologists say the objects belong to the wealthiest of citizens. Most of them are covered in gold. More than 40 statues of ancient gods Funerary masks were found alongside them. So far, we've only discovered 1% of what we have in Saqqara. If we keep working in Saqqara, we are expected to find human and animal tombs from all ages. Besides the mummies and sarcophagi, more than 40 statues of ancient gods and funerary masks were uncovered. Sunset brings the stargazers to a cliff overlooking the Minnesota River, a place where you can stare up and wonder, are we really all alone? Absolutely. I think that the world's too big for there not to be UFOs, actually. I think it's almost impossible for there not to be something out there. I'm sure that the, the, the government knows something, but I feel like right now it's kind of, kind of ridiculous. <laughs> There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. It sounds less ridiculous after the Pentagon released classified video earlier this year of Navy jet fighters chasing down an object of unknown origin, moving faster than any known aircraft in ways that seem to defy the laws of physics. They're all going against the wind, the wind's 120 knots in the west. Oh, I think, dude. The Pentagon recently announcing a task force to detect, analyze, and catalog what they now call unidentified aerial phenomena that could potentially pose a threat to U.S. national security. They're all over the place, I mean, you know, <laughs> you just never really know what you're going to Wait, we find. saw one the other night. These cliffs are also the perfect scouting location. The most notorious UFO encounter in Minnesota belongs to Marshall County Sheriff's Deputy Val Johnson. August 1979, he was on patrol near the North Dakota border when he saw a small bright light the size of a frisbee hovering a few feet above the road. A fictionalized version of the encounter became a plot point in the TV show Fargo. Deputy Johnson said the light followed him for a mile and a half until he heard breaking glass and passed out. He woke to find his eyes burning. The squad stalled. A headlight smashed. There were strange dents in the hood, cracks in the windshield, and the roof and trunk antennas were bent. The car's clock and his wristwatch both stopped for 14 minutes. Deputy Johnson, long retired, declined to talk to us, his daughter-in-law telling the Fox 9 investigators he's tired of talking about the case. Do you feel like sometimes this experience changes people's lives? Based on what they tell me, it certainly does, so yes, yeah. For the better? Well, th that varies from person to person. I mean, some of the cases that we've looked at, people are traumatized by what they've seen. Like the Minnetonka family, who seven years ago saw what looked like a giant acorn floating above their house. Later that night, the mother said she woke up in the garage, restrained and probed by an unknown entity. She said the, the arms had like two or three fingers, but were the... Th but the fingers were more claw-like and where the thumbs would be there were like long tentacles. 
There's the St. Paul family who thought they had a home intruder, only to have their two and a half year old son describe in detail a bug-eyed alien. Two and a half year old, probably an imaginary friend is what they thought. Another infamous encounter was in Long Prairie back in 65, a 40 foot rocket ship in the middle of the road. As he gets out and starts approaching it, there's these three little entities that he described as being about the size and shape of metal tin cans with two legs, kind of awkwardly walking toward him between him and this rocket. There's no solid answer. Sorry to say, I don't think it's aliens. Thaddeus LeCourcier is no stranger to staring at the stars. But the Bell Planetarium's astronomy guru has a more pragmatic explanation for the increase in UFO sightings. I think some of the best explanations are in the last few months, um, we've been stuck at home. We've been spending more time outside, hopefully, if you can, uh, where we're getting more used to seeing things that maybe we don't see when we're stuck inside an office every day. Thanks to the Hubble telescope, we already know what's out there is more wondrous and mysterious than mere flying saucers an infinitely expanding universe of black holes and dark energy. More than a hundred billion stars in our own galactic neighborhood, the Milky Way. And here we are, at the edge of a long spiral, a small blue marble circling an average star in a third ring suburb of space. As long as people have been around, we've been looking up at the sky. We've been trying to understand what we're seeing. We've been cataloging it. We've been telling stories. Uh, and and it's such a powerful thing to see. It connects us to something so much more. UFOs are part of that story. A stab in the dark at a fundamental question that could unite humanity. Are we really, truly, all alone? Miley Cyrus is recalling an out-of-this-world experience. The music superstar revealed to pal Rick Owens for the latest issue of Interview Magazine that she once had a close encounter with a UFO and she's got a witness to back her up. Miley recalled once driving through San Bernardino in Southern California with a friend when they were chased down the road by what she described as a flying snowplow that was glowing yellow. And yes, according to Miley, her friend saw it too. The Midnight Sky singer explained that she wasn't exactly afraid, even when spotting a stranger in the mysterious aircraft. But she added that the whole thing was so surreal, she just wasn't quite sure what to make of it. Miley may not be able to verify exactly what happened, but she's not here for skeptics either. The 27-year-old said she thinks it's a form of narcissism to believe that humans are alone in the universe. And as far as she's concerned, she's got all the proof she needs that we aren't. Hotter temperatures, frequent bushfires, drought and intense cyclones. That's the forecast from Australia's top science and weather experts. Extreme conditions are on the way. In the Philippines, the president there, Rodrigo Duterte, has declared a state of calamity for the entire island. The storm unleashed winds of around 250 kilometres an hour and record rainfall. Authorities are now assessing the scale of the damage. Some communities are describing it as the worst flooding in four decades. Many villages were swamped, crops destroyed, and hundreds of thousands left without power. Days after causing devastation and killing at least 67 people in the Philippines, Typhoon Van Co has made landfall in Vietnam. Swelling rivers and triggering mudslides across Central and South America. Rooftops dot the sea of muddy water in Honduras. As in Vietnam. The Philippines has also been battered relentlessly by storms over the last two months. Banco is the eighth to hit the country in the last eight weeks, and the 21st this year. But for all the drama of the last week, the hope in the Philippines is that the worst is over, at least for now until the next storm hits. A spring storm explodes over New South Wales Central West. From deluge to drought, floods and fires. It's been an unprecedented year of skies choked with smoke with thousands fleeing. 